Think your salmon's just fish? It's actually a VIP flying colder than ice, tracked by sensors, and shipped with military precision. Behind that perfect pink fillet is a hidden world of tech, logistics, and agro science where even a two-degree slip can ruin everything. It's not just food, it's a race against time that most people never notice, but once you see it, you'll never forget it. Picture this, a salmon, born in a quiet, pristine hatchery nestled deep in the highlands of Norway or the forested valleys of Chile. Its story doesn't begin with salt water. Nope, it starts in freshwater, under the constant watch of aquaculture specialists who practically raise these fish like their own kids. These early stages are critical. This is when the salmon is known as a smolt, the teenage phase of its life, if you will. Now, smolt aren't tossed into the ocean willy-nilly. There's a science to this transition, a delicate choreography that blends biology and technology. Timing is everything. These fish need to be tough enough to handle salt water, and when they're ready, they're carefully transported to sea cages, massive enclosures that float off remote coastlines, tethered to nature but powered by modern tech. In these cages, the salmon grow strong and fat on a diet designed for optimal health, all monitored by sensors and digital systems that ensure balance between growth, nutrition, and environmental harmony. This is agroforestry at sea, farming in the wild with a twist of technology. It's not just about producing food, it's about sustainability, ecological respect, and managing resources like a seasoned chess player thinking 10 moves ahead. Agriculture isn't only on land anymore. This is where the sea meets innovation. Once the salmon reach their prime weight, usually around four to five kilograms, it's time to harvest. But don't picture something out of a fishing boat scene from an old movie. This is high efficiency, high integrity work. The process kicks off with stunning the salmon to render them unconscious quickly and humanely. From there, they're bled, gutted, and chilled. Fast, all within a matter of hours. The goal? Lock in freshness, preserve texture, and get that fish into the cold chain before you can say, sushi night. Speaking of the cold chain, this is where things get serious. Imagine vacuum sealed or ice packed boxes lined up like soldiers, each one loaded into temperature controlled trucks that practically run their own tech driven diagnostics every mile. Everything's tracked from the moment the fish leave the processing plant to the moment they hit the runway or the docks. This isn't just transportation, this is a symphony of logistics. From remote aquaculture sites, salmon must travel to major processing hubs. These hubs are not just warehouses, they're precision facilities built to hold temp, minimize handling, and keep the product moving without losing a single degree of cold. Here, tech is king. Real-time temperature sensors, automated handling arms, and even AI-powered routing systems all work together to keep things ticking. Now, depending on the destination, there's a big decision. Air freight or sea freight? Each has its own rules. Air is fast, ideal for markets like the US or Japan, where consumers expect their salmon to be almost fresh off the boat, but it's pricey. The cost per kilo spikes and flight availability can be spotty, especially during peak seasons or global disruptions. Sea freight, slower but cheaper. And with the right tech in play, think smart containers with CO2 controls and humidity regulation, it's becoming more viable by the day. In fact, there's a growing trend of balancing the two. Many exporters use air for urgent orders and sea for bulk shipments that can afford a bit more time. The keyword is balance, balancing cost, time, and quality using cutting-edge agricultural logistics. Take the example of salmon from Chile heading to the U.S. That fish may have started life in Patagonia, moved to an ocean farm off the coast of Puerto Montt, harvested in a waterside plant, then driven six hours to Santiago's International Airport, all while riding in a mobile fridge. From there, it catches a red-eye cargo flight, lands in Miami, gets cleared, and trucks its way up to distributors in New York or Boston, all within 48 to 72 hours. Or think about Norway to Japan, a trip that mixes Arctic sea air with Tokyo's electric pace. Norwegian salmon often leave from sites in the fjords, loaded onto reefers bound for Oslo's specially designed seafood terminal. This place is built like a salmon-specific airport with systems fine-tuned for fish, blast chillers, robotic conveyors, and dock workers trained in marine product logistics. From there, the salmon catches a direct flight on a modified passenger jet, where, believe it or not, seats have been removed just to make room for more fish. And let's not forget how much agriculture as a whole has morphed to accommodate this level of precision. 
What used to be a catch-it-if-you-can industry is now a hyper-connected, tech-savvy global operation. Agroforestry isn't just trees and soil anymore. It's data, cold chains, smart logistics, and a constant conversation between tradition and transformation. The salmon's path is nothing short of a global relay race, passing from hatchery to sea to ice to air to plate. Each handoff is timed, each step orchestrated. But here's the kicker. What if even one step goes wrong? What if the temperature spikes just a degree, or Customs holds a shipment an extra half day? The entire shipment's value could sink like a stone. Which brings us to something exporters lose sleep over, freshness. Because behind every successful shipment lies an invisible countdown clock. Let's get one thing straight. Fresh salmon isn't just food. It's a ticking time bomb of value, flavor, and risk. Once that fish is harvested, the clock starts ticking and there's no pause button. It's got to stay cold, it's got to keep moving, and it has to land on a plate looking like it swam there. That's no easy feat when you're hauling it across continents. Now here's the golden rule of salmon logistics. Keep it under 4 degree kits. That's just under 40 degree kits for the Fahrenheit faithful. Why? Because even a few degrees higher opens the door to bacterial growth, texture loss, and off flavors that no amount of wasabi can fix. Temperature is the invisible villain in this story, always lurking, always waiting for a slip-up. But here's where it gets wild. Maintaining that perfect chill isn't just about putting fish in a cold box. It's a high-stakes game of consistency. Think trucks crossing winding fjord roads, ferry rides through rainy archipelagos, flights delayed by storms or labor strikes, each link in the chain a potential crack. One missed connection, one power outage, one customs delay, and the fish isn't just late, it's ruined. And time? Time is the ruthless partner of temperature in this whole equation. In many markets, especially those demanding sashimi-grade freshness, salmon must reach consumers within 72 hours of harvest. Let that sink in. 72 hours to get from a remote sea farm in Chile or Norway across oceans, through border checks and into restaurants or grocery stores in places like New York, Tokyo, or Dubai. Every hour counts, but international logistics doesn't always play nice. Border inspections can add hours or days if things get tangled in red tape. In some countries, inspectors open boxes at random, exposing contents to ambient air, delaying cold chain recovery, and sometimes triggering the need for re-inspection. If you've ever had your suitcase flagged at TSA, imagine that, but with 10 tons of raw fish and a clock ticking in the background. Geography also plays its part in complicating the mission. These fish aren't farmed in bustling cities with highways and airports five minutes away. We're talking rugged coastal zones, isolated islands, or narrow fjords that need ferries or float planes just to move goods inland. It's not just a transportation issue, it's an infrastructure puzzle. A salmon raised on a tiny Norwegian island might need a boat, two trucks, and a snowplow escort just to make it to a distribution hub. Then there's the wild card, economics. Fuel prices spike, that cold chain truck just got more expensive to run. Flights get cut due to airline restructuring. Now you're scrambling to find belly space in cargo holds that are overbooked or priced at a premium. And perishable freight isn't exactly treated like royalty. In fact, it's one of the first to get bumped when capacity shrinks. Remember when COVID-19 hit and air freight evaporated almost overnight? The salmon industry got slammed. Suddenly, exporters had fish ready to ship, but no planes. Even major hubs like Oslo saw their seafood terminals back up like a clogged artery. So what did smart exporters do? They pivoted, hard. Some rerouted cargo through neighboring countries. Others struck deals with airlines to run salmon flights, filling passenger jets stripped of seats and loaded with ice-packed cargo. A few even doubled down on sea freight, investing in better containers that could preserve quality over longer hauls. Technology became the lifeline. Real-time tracking systems were deployed like never before. Temperature loggers inside boxes, satellite pings from reefers, cloud-based dashboards that let logistics teams see in a glance where every shipment was, how cold it was, and whether anything was drifting toward danger zones. This wasn't just about saving fish, it was about protecting livelihoods, managing risk, and keeping the entire tech-driven agriculture economy flowing. And speaking of agriculture, this is where the traditional meets the digital. The age of the clipboard is over. Modern salmon logistics now look more like a NASA mission control room. You've got integrated platforms tracking shipments, coordinating border paperwork, even predicting delays using AI. 
and with agroforestry practices spreading to marine environments, we're seeing holistic thinking applied to everything from feed efficiency to transport routes, because ecosystems don't stop at the water's edge. So yes, freshness is fragile, but it's also fiercely protected. The entire industry is built on the shoulders of logistics specialists, tech innovators, and problem solvers who understand that freshness isn't a luxury, it's the product. But what happens when the challenges outpace the systems? What happens when scale meets stress and old methods can't keep up with new expectations? That's when innovation shows up, not in theory, but in action. Let's face it, if salmon could talk, they'd probably say, thanks for the Wi-Fi. Because the fish industry isn't just about nets and ice anymore. It's powered by smart tech, real-time data, and a whole lot of innovation that quietly hums behind the scenes. This is where agriculture goes high-tech, where agroforestry thinking morphs into ocean-smart logistics, and where every degree, every second, and every mile is watched like a hawk. Imagine this. A shipment of premium Atlantic salmon leaves a sea cage off the coast of Bergen, Norway, as it travels, dozens of IoT sensors buried inside the boxes are feeding real-time temperature, humidity, and CO2 levels to a central dashboard. The moment something dips out of spec, even by a smidge, an alert pings logistics teams halfway across the world. That's not science fiction. That's today's seafood game. Blockchain's in the mix too. Yeah, the same tech behind Bitcoin is keeping your sushi safe. These digital ledgers track every step of the salmon's travel, from smolt to sashimi. It's about transparency, accountability, and traceability. Not just for peace of mind, but to meet growing regulatory demands and consumer expectations. People want to know where their food came from, how it was handled, and whether it lived a good life before it hit the grill. And here's something cool, Oslo's Seafood Terminal. If you haven't heard about it, imagine a tech-infused airport built almost entirely for salmon. It's a logistics dream. Chilled docks, robot arms that sort pallets, AI systems that predict bottlenecks before they even happen. This place is built to move fish like clockwork. Every inch is optimized to protect the cold chain, save time, and streamline customs clearance. It doesn't stop there. Some of the newest shipping containers used in sea freight are smarter than your average smart fridge. These high-tech reefers can regulate carbon dioxide, keep temperatures stable across oceans, and even alert handlers when something goes off. They use less water, generate less waste, and support longer transit times without sacrificing quality. That's a big deal when you're trying to scale operations or reduce reliance on high-cost air freight. And here's a surprising twist. Some salmon are flying in style, on modified passenger planes where the seats have been yanked out. When COVID collapsed passenger travel, airlines started converting jets into makeshift fish freighters. Turns out, salmon doesn't mind legroom. These praters, as they're cheekily called, became a lifeline when demand stayed hot, but cargo space went cold. Let's talk about salmon farms for a second. We're not talking wooden docks and manual feed scoops. Modern ocean farms are a blend of biology and robotics. Automated feeding systems use sonar to detect when fish are full, adjusting feed levels in real time. Drones and underwater rovers monitor fish health, snapping photos and gathering biometric data to detect early signs of disease. It's all part of a bigger shift. Less guesswork, more science. Some farms even use AI to track fish movement patterns and behavior. If salmon are sluggish or staying too close to the edges, it could signal something's wrong. Stress, illness, or even changes in water quality. These insights lead to faster responses, better welfare, and stronger harvests. Agriculture may have started in the soil, but it's evolved to dance with data in the sea. Then there's shipping sustainability, something that's finally starting to get the spotlight. With climate pressures rising, the industry is moving toward greener options. Electric reefer trucks are being tested in Europe, offering low-emission hauls from port to market. Some countries are developing green corridors, dedicated routes for low-impact freight movement. It's still early days, but the intent is real. Tech isn't just making logistics smarter, it's making them cleaner. And what ties it all together? Integration. We're seeing platforms that unify the entire trip. Farm data, harvest info, shipping timelines, sensor outputs, customs documentation, all in one place. It's like Salmon's own version of mission control. This is the future of agroforestry in aquatic form, connected, intelligent, and constantly evolving. The tech isn't just shiny, it's strategic. It's what lets exporters sleep at night, knowing their shipments are being monitored from sea cage to supermarket. 
It's what gives buyers the confidence to pay top dollar for fish that's flown halfway around the world, and it's what transforms the ancient practice of farming into a futuristic, digitized, and sustainable powerhouse. But of course, tech is only as good as the environment it operates in, and while innovation's moving at full speed, nature has a way of tossing curveballs, rising temperatures, changing sea patterns, even the politics of global shipping routes. The smartest systems still rely on resilience, which leaves us wondering, how will salmon logistics keep evolving as both the climate and consumer expectations shift? If that blew your mind even a little, imagine what else is hiding behind the foods you eat every day. There's a whole world of technology and precision in agriculture most folks never see until now. What surprised you the most? The flying fish, the cold chain, the robot farms? Drop your thoughts in the comments. I'd love to hear what caught your attention. And hey, if you're into this kind of behind-the-scenes look at how the world really works, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss what's coming next. There's another video waiting for you on screen. Click it, and let's keep going.